Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game with another one. I got a 60s GM car here with a rusty trunk floor in it. Well, it was a rusty trunk floor. Um, Mid 60s GM cars were known for bad sections in the trunk, just by the rear wheel wells in them. And uh, you cannot buy a panel for this section for many of these GM models. So uh, I'm gonna show you how you can go about making your own panel and do it so it looks factory and install it and no one will ever know it was ever replaced. Stick around. Hey, before we get started, don't forget to check out my merch line at fitchesfabrications.com at Teespring. And uh, the link is in the description below underneath the videos. It's also at the end of this video. She's mint. Do it from the windows up. Check it out. Okay, let's get started here. What we got is a 1965 Buick Wildcat. A lot of the mid-60s GM cars uh were a lot alike in many ways the rough lines and this here are a lot like the 65 impala the firewall sections but other than that mostly everything else on these were wildcat only um especially in the trunk uh one of the most common places for any trunk floor this car is in really good shape okay every one of these old 60s gms always got bad in this section right here as you can see right here you see how bad the hole and everything is there now this one here has had some filler work done to it. People filled over the holes and done everything with it and you can see it has been worked onto it before. Uh, this is a common occurrence with these. This is where the, the tire and everything flicks back and mud and dirt and everything. And, and there's a brace there that welds on here and goes up around here. Now they're different in all the different vehicles. Like a Chev one is different than a Buick and a Pontiac is different than a Pontiac and then a Chev and so on and so on. So you know the Buick itself is its own uh, design and fit for that year so the problem you're going to run into is find replacement panels for these which you're not going to find uh, you can you can find certain panels uh online but uh my advice to you is anytime you come across a body panel that is not painted black and you, in the ad it shows it and it's bare metal it's a uh, homemade style panel like it's done hand formed it's not done on a press and usually the quality of them are really bad. You're just as well to go on and make your own piece. Now I went ahead and I cut this section out over here to get started and you can see what we're up against. And you can see why uh, they rusted out. These here mounts used to fill up with uh, dirt and debris coming off the back tires and whatnot. They had that hole there. Uh, from factory, these cars back in the mid 60s, nothing was painted. They're all welded together and then painted underneath. This car is in really good shape only for these two sections here. As you can see, this is what you're up against here for rust in that corner. Now there's a little dimple there for the body mount bolt. I put that in later on because the body mount went here, which I removed. I got the mount removed and I broke it off. I just had to put a new bolt in it, but I'll reinstall that there. But I took the mount out all together. Now these are different on all the vehicles. Like one off a Chev won't fit this, and one off a Pontiac won't fit it. So, you know, it's odd. You'd have to get parts from another car and whatnot. And every one of these, even stuff in Arizona and in places, I've seen pictures of cars from Arizona with the quarter panels bad down here. And I got the same issue on this one here. Right here, a little small section here I'm going to have to repair. But right now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these sections up here, get this mount reinstalled, repeat it on the other side, and get both of them done. Now, now the floor pan section I'm putting in there, I only come as far as the beads. I didn't want to get into the beads. All this here is a flat floor. The only thing you're going to find is got a little bit of relief right here that I can put into it. And then that welds onto the panel there and it welds onto there. So I'm going to make this one piece, this two piece, and then the top section. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to start by cutting out a piece of steel that's bigger than this whole section. You could probably make a template. Some of you might find it easier to make a template. I've been at this a long time. I just prefer to make the panel and I'm going to make a big square piece and I'm going to start fitting it up in this edge here. I'm going to leave a lot of excess up here, excess here, excess here. So that way when I start moving it over and I get to fitting up there, it should work out all right. Let's get started on that. This is all I did to measure this here. You can see this point here. 
I'm gonna come out about here and come down and you see I got 13 inches here and you can see where I, I stuck it off an inch so I got a little bit of excess and everything on the end of it so I'm gonna make a 13 and then I'm gonna come up here and put that about there like that and come back and you can see where this point is here I'm gonna come back about here and you see I got 10 inches so I'm gonna make a piece 13 by 10 there it is 10 by 13 I'm not going to get worried about shapes and curves and whatever like that because I'm going to start off with this here I always like starting off with a corner that when I starts moving I can keep it square and start moving it in to fit my panel to fit up here and to come down here I'll trim all this off after the fact again I don't uh, waste no metal uh, everything down here I has down it for small stuff and I save a lot of it I just find this faster if you want to go ahead and make a template by all means do so Okay, I got the metal all cut out. I got it cleaned up. Uh, that's the section of the shelving that I had. It's an 18 gauge steel. That's why I like using it. And uh, like I, I said many times before in other videos, uh, when you start making panels, it might be wise to sand them first. I did this one here with a 24 brick because there was paint on it. But like if you just want to sand it with a bit of hunter paper, uh, a bit of 180 or something like that, sand both sides of it now because when you start shaping everything up, it's going to be very hard to sand later. So that way you'll have all the sanding process completed. So when it comes time to apply paint to it, it will stick. Because one problem I've seen many people do is they'll have a flat, a brand new piece of steel. They'll cut out their piece of steel. They'll turn around, they weld it in the car. And then when they get underneath the bottom of the car, this section of the car is not even sanded. So you end up just painting it over the top of it. When you paint over the top of it, all the paint will peel off because there's an oily residue on it or whatnot. But if you sand it now, the paint will stick to it when it comes time to have to add paint to it. So I'm going to go over now, take this, lay this in place here, and I'm only going to rough it in. Like I said, if you want to make a template, you can do it. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in there square, so that I'm happy with it. And a little bit of an overlap up there on the end, up on that end there. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take a marker now and start scribing this here. So it's parallel to this shape here. And I'll just, I'll just take my time and creep up on it and take a couple of trims, trimmings to get it. See, that's all I did is I took a marker. And I went parallel to here and I just drew a rough line so it's parallel so that's roughly the same distance right along that whole thing there I'll trim that up now and I'll start sliding it up fitting it trim it a bit more trim it a bit more as I go I just do it this way is like I can sit down and make a template I just find um, being in this at this a long time I can actually see the shapes a lot of times so as you get better at it you'll actually say well I can do this here and this will work now you're gonna wonder how is he gonna cut a curved line with a grinding wheel. The trick to it is, is you're not cutting down into the metal, you're cutting the top of the metal this way, you're not cutting the metal this way. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to scribe a line, the shape that I want, and I'm just going to follow that line. Now, as you can see, that's a pretty good cut. I fit in there pretty good. Now, the problem with it is, it's not up this way far enough. Now, all I got to do now is I draw a parallel line to that deer and just keep trimming it back so that it'll slide up further each time and it'll move back into this panel here more because I want this to move this up. And where do, how far do I want to move this up? Uh, probably here somewhere. So, I'll take this here and I'll lay this in place again. And you can see, so... I'm going to want to basically come up about another inch go up that way another inch you can see here there's a grinding mark here which is pretty close to the edge so I'd like to go up to here a bit further to give myself some uh, clean metal now I went clean up this edge here so it's not so rough in the ring so I don't cut my hand out and all I'm going to do is take my marker use my finger as a guide come down and mark 
and just guard right along it like that. Now be careful that you don't uh, hook sharp metal. Like that. So now I've got a parallel line to that there and I'll just cut that off. Now that i got it all trimmed back, I'm gone up an inch higher than where I wanted to be. So I'm up inside there, so I'll just fit that up there. Now that's the reason why, the reason why I went and turned around and done this cut first is for the simple fact that, like, if you had to stay with the square piece of metal, you can see this is not square no more now. If I had to square this up, it's not going to fit, see? So I wasn't concerned about none of this out here or down here. I want to get that fitting nice up there first. Because that's my first one. Then I can draw my angle over here where I got to do my cutting and bending and whatever on here. And this here has to be trimmed up like this anyway in order for this to fit in there. So now that I got that fitting up there where I'm happy with it, what I'm going to do next now is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put these bends in it. Now if you look closely here, this comes over and tips down and goes underneath this. This panel here comes over the top of it, which basically comes up here and got a little rolled edge on it. And then comes across in the spot well across the top here. I'm going to make this new piece here and replace this all this where I went and butchered it, taking it apart. Because it was hard to get at with the drill underneath the car because the way the mount was designed, as you can see, it's not very easy to get at with a drill. Because when you look at it this way here, it's kind of hard to drill them holes out. So I ended up getting rough with it. So I'll cut this out and I'll weld a piece in here and I'll put this roll lip and everything on it and bring this over the top of it. I'll put this in first, but I'm going to make the top panel first and get it fit nice because this just goes underneath it. So now I'm going to mark this here, put a straight edge up there and then put this band on it. And as you can see, it's just a little slight rolled edge on it. So I'm going to roll the edge back and have it so it goes underneath that there. Well, I got it marked there now where I'm going to put my top end right there. And all how I done that is I just put this ruler here and lined it up on these beads here. I lined it up there and there. Like so. Lined it up here and here. So that was a straight line. I drew a straight line up through there. So that'll be my first bend. It'll go down and then I'll flatten it out again. Now I got the marked line on that. But the first bend I gotta go this way. So I gotta turn the metal upside down. I marked it here and here off of my marks on the panel. Right here and here, I marked it so I can put it in here and bend it up. And I'll bend it up on the back because in the bend it back the other way, it's going to. Uh, All I'm doing here is I'm, uh, I have an idea of how much is there. It's roughly about, I think close to a quarter of an inch. Let me measure it. So all I went and did is I took the protractor and I measured it up and got the distance there. Off of that there, because they're the same all along as you can see here, see? I'll go over now and uh, transfer that over onto my bend. All I'm going to do is measure that there. That one there looks good. That one there is a bit off. There we go. That's good there and there. Lift that up. And we'll bend that back. And then we got our little rolled lip. Then we got our little rolled lip. As you can see, the roll lip now rolls down is over this, but it's laid on top of this and I gotta go underneath it. But uh, I'm I felt underneath and it goes it only goes back to here. So I'll mark this right here and I'll draw a straight line and I'll chop off that piece and then that'll be ready to go. Now I went ahead and I trimmed off that piece. As you can see, there it is fit in place, and you can see the rolled edge. I went and softened up that little roll a small bit. Now what I got to work on is this up here. Now the thing with this is it's not a, a sharp edge on the, on the thing. If you look closely here, you can see this got a roll to it. It rolls down around the panel. It's the roll back is back about a quarter of an inch off of this here. So I'm going to put a, a roll on this first before I put a downward lip on it. The uh, lip is straight up and down, so that shouldn't be an issue. 
So I'm just going to put a roll lip on this here, on this section here. Put a little roll lip on it so it rolls down, and I'm going to cap off the end of it. All I'm using, a little tea dolly that I made, a bit of flat square stock. Looks to be about an inch and a half by a quarter inch thick. That's a bit of a half inch round rod that uh, was probably, would have been an axle out of a, a, a trike, probably. And I just rounded the ends off it. That's all I did, make my own little tea dolly. I just clamped out my vise, and all these I just roll the edge over on it with the hammer. You got a nice little roll over edge, see? Now I'll just put a cap on the end of it. Down here on the end now, that there's going to be hard to roll. I'll probably dress that with a grinder and weld it and then uh, shape it with the grinder after the fact. I'll use weld on the inside of it together. It's kind of hard to roll the edge and I'm afraid I'm going to beat all this up. So I'll just do that with the grinder. And some welding. So as you can see now, it's got a nice little rolled edge rolled in on it. It's the little details, right? Like if you had to square it off, you wouldn't notice it. Now that I got the little rolled edge on it, and when you put the seam sealer through it again, it'll look like it was factory. All I did is I reached underneath the bench there. That was a piece I cut out from something else, and I just put it away. So now I'll just turn around and I'll clean that up, and I'll fit that in around there, and I'll weld it on there. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'll work that into that there now and tack weld that in place and weld it around. Don't ever be concerned with making the perfect piece to fit a panel. Like up here, let a bit of a hang off. Go a little bit longer. Come down here, let it hang off here, have it a bit wider here. It's a lot easier to cut it off perfect after than it is to make a perfect piece and maneuver it and have to add a piece onto it later on. So, don't ever be afraid to use larger pieces when you're putting stuff together to do a nicer job on it. That all fit pretty good there, but you can see here now, I'm going to notch that out there so that fits flush there. Here it is notched out, as you can see. All I used was a grinding stone. Took my time with it, grinded it off. Now it's fit in place. Now I'm just going to lay that in and start on one end and work my way along. I'll probably start down here where I got the notch to and start welding here so I can get the notch to fit nice. And then I'll start welding it along here, bringing it up there. Now I tack weld it in place on the inside. You can see here I haven't done nothing with that there. There's a fair bit of a gap and everything there. You see I just tack weld it in the inside. Now I'll come in here and I'll re-weld all this in here. And I'll weld all this out here and then I'll grind and dress it. And then I'll trim it up after the fact. Okay, went ahead, I weld it on the inside. And on the outside. A little bit extra here and a little bit extra there so I can grind that corner around. Right. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to grind this down with a uh, grinding disc, this here quite possibly. And I might cut this down with a stone yet, but it's an inside edge so I should be able to get it with the, the flap wheel, with them wheels. And then I'll clean this up in here, but I'll leave the strength here because when this is all put together, this panel here goes in across this here. So you won't see that inside lip down inside there and I must keep the strength there where that is too but out here this will be flush and when you look in the throat you'll see that lipped edge right so I want that lipped edge look nice so I'll go ahead now and I'll grind up this outer edge here and dress the inside now I went ahead I grinded it all off smooth it on the inside as you can see there's lots of material there 
So there's lots of strength in that there. As you can see here, now I got that little roll edge done. All I done was uh, done it with weld. If you tried to round out that edge, you would have damaged a lot of stuff. And by adding some welding to it all, you can use the welding to shape it all. And I got a nice little roll edge on that there. Now I can trim this off here, and then come down here and trim this off the, the width that I want it. And then I got a nice lip put on the end of it then, ready to, to be installed on the rig. So I'm going to trim that off there now. If you look here, you'll see that it's only about three quarters of an inch wide, that actual lip. I left all that there so I get some measurements off it. So I ended up, that's all I did, is I trimmed it back, so it was about three quarters of an inch. So it's the same way. So now I got that panel ready to go. So now all I need to do now is start fitting it in there. And trimming the back and marking it. The first thing I do is I gotta go up here and I get that so that will fall down. So I can fit it all in place and get it all set up so I can start trimming it out to fit the panel in place. I'm not gonna weld this in yet first and make that piece up there that'll be my first piece to put in place and then we'll go from there so all I went and did is I trimmed it back in here cut it back on a bit of an angle as you can see it's not cut and I wasn't worried about trimming this off yet and I cut it straight down and I cleaned up all along here and got rid of the old metal I was off it all I used that was to take it off was with the grinder use the grinder and a little chisel and knock it loose with the hammer and I'll clean that up better than that and paint that again later on but I just wanted to get it so I get the panel to fit and I just trimmed up the corner on this a bit to get a better fit on it and then I just laid it in place and so now that's ready to go so that's where that's going to go to now and you can see it's got a nice little rolled edge on it like it was from factory so now all I'm going to do now next is I'm going to make this piece up in here okay figured out the measurement I need the piece six and a half by three so I ended up going like three and a quarter and that piece there had a cut on it there so that was seven so I said seven so I'm just going to trim that up there now and clean up this piece of metal okay, I got the piece cleaned up I also got it marked all I did is I used a protractor and I measured up the distance that I wanted it to be right here and I come over here and I transferred it onto here and just scribe it along there and I got my line so now the trick with this is I gotta bend this up and this gotta roll over and go down again. So let's go over the brake, see what I can come up with. I always prefer one side of the brake more than the other. I have better success with this. getting it there I'll bring that down and roll that out flat and round up this edge a bit and I should have it all I'm using is my tea dolly upside down I'm trying to make that there a little bit more rounder Went over now and rebent it again in the vise or in the brake, sorry. And it's a nice, it's not as sharp no more now. So all I'm going to do now is lay that in the vise now and 90 that off. Pretty good little piece. I get that done. As you just see me scribing that, 
Uh, what I went and did is I caught and test fit, and I caught and test fit, as you can see. I trimmed it up as best I could. It's hard to get in there with a grinder, a big grinder. I used a small one. You could probably use a smaller grinder, um, probably hacksaw blade, you could probably do a tidier job. Number of different ways. I just got the basic tools. So I just put a little zip wheel on this on my air grinder and just trims it all up. And then I just uh, scribe the panel so I can butt weld it down here. And I can do no cutting butt on that. That's going to be all done, cut to fit. But you can see my scribe line. It's not what you call overly straight because all this is good metal anyway. And there's a panel that goes up against this. So what I'm going to uh, do now is I'm going to cut this off here, trim this off so this here will fit. Now after lots of cutting and trimming and fitting and stuff like that, you can see the shape I got this in. Right, and that fits in there, like so. And I got that to fit in there, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get down underneath her now and uh, I'm going to tack weld that in place and then weld that in place. Okay, I went ahead and I welded all that up and down there. That's a butt weld. As you can see, like I've always said before, not pretty. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and grind and dress this and finish this right off before it goes on and does anything else. There you go. I can't say it enough about uh, when you're doing this stuff to finish off what you're doing, grinding and all, have it done because later on you're not going to be able to get in here to grind this up. Okay, the first thing I went and did is I dollied up the lip that was down here on this section here, straightened it all up. Uh, it is a bit of a gap there now, and I'm not too concerned about it right yet because this will draw into this. What I'm concerned about is lining up this section here, so this roll meets this roll, and down here where this roll meets this roll. There are the two points that I'm concerned about right now because this here can be drawn into this, but when if you draw this to that, this will throw off and this will be thrown off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down underneath it and I'm going to mark it where it was two. So I get a rough idea of how big the patch has got to be. And then I'm going to turn around and come up here, take the panel out, and I'm going to scribe straight lines on it. So I'm going to do the cotton butt out. All I did was lay the uh, I-beam on it for a bit of weight so it holds down. Then I went underneath it and I marked it with a marker. So when you hold it up, this is what you're left with. Now what I'm going to do is back here in this corner here, I'm going to trim this up and fit this again. Just make sure it's fitting nice and whatever. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to show you here. Over here in the better light. What I do is I'm going to come over here. Then I'm going to cut straight lines here, here, and here. So that way I can do the cotton butt. I'm trying to do a curved edge on a cotton butt is not going to be easy. You can do it with a uh, a um, hacksaw. You probably could, right? With a small blade on it, a reciprocating saw or whatever. But um, it does everything with a grinder. So I'm going to trim up this corner. I get this corner fitting nice. So this is butt welded in and size this up. And then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to mark this out. Here's all I went and did. As you can see the original line coming in through here. I come over probably a quarter of an inch and I drew a straight line here. I drew a straight line here. And I drew a straight line here. I'll cut these off now. These will be my top sections. I do the straight edge for the simple fact it's easier to do the cutting butt with straight edge. Fellas likes doing corners and stuff like that. Have at her. I uh, just find it's too time consuming. I know some straight edges. So I'm going to uh, trim this up now and fit this in place again. Now you might have wondered why I cut it so small. And there's the reasons for this was these two beads. You can see how close that bead is to the original cut. I wanted to, there is no beads on this section here. Uh, this was all flat panel. There is one dimple there that I got to put in it. I'm going to mark that now shortly. But I wanted to keep it inside these beads. So that way it wouldn't affect the factory trunk floor. So that's why I went such a small piece. So now that I got it marked out where it's going to go. I'm going to set this up. Now there's going to be issues cutting this cotton butt because the grinder is not going to go right into there. So I'm going to cut this back so far with a small grinder and butt weld it here and butt weld it here. And I'm going to leave this section here where I can get at it uh, with the big grinder um, for the cotton butt. That'll keep it level and keep it from falling through. People say, well, why don't you just cut it off and cut and butt it now? And they need to be there trying to fit it all in and put clamps on it. No, I'm going to do this cotton butt from about right here to about right here. And all this here will be butt welded in this inner section. Now I went ahead and I scribed lines here. You can barely see them there, but there's lines there I scribed into here. And I come up and scribe the corners. Um... You may be wondering why I just don't do the cotton butt. It's for the simple reason that when you get in here with the grinder, you'll find that you will run into the inner fender well. See? So you can only go in as far as that. So I can only go into about here 
before I start interfering with this. Down here, it's a, you can get away with a lot more, but I'm afraid I'm going to start cutting that piece there. So I'm going to trim this back here a small bit, so I can only come to here, just to make life a lot easier when I does. I haven't got to be so particular with watching my grinder. Now, you see these discs here. When they wear down, I hold on them. I don't throw them out. You can see the size of that one there. That's a wore out one. I hold on them. I have a lot of them there. And all I do is I put them on my air grinder. And I set that up on a low RPM and I trim this off here. This fits in here nicer than the big old grinder do. Trying to fit that grinder, big old clumsy grinder in there to try to cut that up. This here will just take it off in there. And you can probably hit, you get little small um, cutting wheels and whatnot with the bodies up. I like this because everything is behind it here and the blade's on an angle. As you can see, it's a bit different the way it's designed, the way it's set up. There's a, uh, to me, there's more clearances in order to use this piece here. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim up this section here and trim up this section here. Now again, holding on to stuff that's rusted out, I hung on to this one here because it's got this dimple in it, as you can see. There's a raise in it. That's where the mount, the, the body mount bolt came up through, and that gave that space. And if you look at it, it only looks like a ball peen hammer type of uh, mark. I found this piece of pipe here, and that fits right down over it. So all I'll do is I'll just turn it upside down, hammer down into it. But what I went and did is I went down here, I put weight on top of it, and I fit that in place again. And I put weight on top of this. I came down here. As you can see, I got it marked. I just looked straight up through this here and lined it up and marked it. I tried to do a circle first, but as you can see, it didn't work out. So I just eyeballed it. Now I'll take that out and I'll put that dimple in that. So all I'm going to do first is mark my center punch this here because I got to have the dimple going the other way. So that way, when I flip it over, I got a center point. All I'm going to do is lay that on that center line up in that there and put a few tack welds on it. I had to be good, like perfect, as long as it just holds it steady while you're on and hammering it. All I went and did is I tack welded a piece of pipe onto it, center punched it. As you can see the center punched on the center. And now I'll just slip it over and I got the center punched here. I'm going to clamp that into the device. Nice and tight. Put that on the center punch and tap it down. As you can see, 
It's just a dimple there now. And the dimple is down the side of it. All right. I'll just remove that now. There's a little dimple. I'll just clean it up now. And then that's ready to install. Okay, I went ahead and I got the panels all prepped. And I got some rust paint put on them. Where I'm going to uh, weld them. Uh, you won't get at them later on. But I'm going to repaint all that again. You can see the little dimple in it now. So for the panel. And I went ahead and I also done it here. I got all that painted. And I got the holes put in it there. For all that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fit this in place. And I'm going to weld it here. And weld it over here. This is not going to really want to fit perfectly here. Because this is what I'm concerned about. Is making it look right there. And making it look right there. So let's get that done. Here's all I went and did. As I tack welded in here. I got that to line up nice there. And then I come over here. And I lined up this spot over here. And I welded it on over there. I wasn't concerned about none of this out here. This is all stuck up and everything like that. I'm going to put all this in place now. And put this down. And tack weld it in place. So it's all held in place. So that I can go back and start welding everything up. And not worried about none of this in here yet. I'll uh, can tap it up in the corner and not worry about none of it up there. I want to get this here welded on first, and then I'm gonna work on this section here and then this section. I went ahead then pushed down on it, put a couple of tacks on it. It's all overlapped there now. Don't be concerned about that. I got a hell all held in place and I'll come over here and I'll start cutting and buttoning this all the way around now.
Yeah, I got it all cut and butt all along there. I um, went off a little small bit up there, but I managed to get it. You can see, like, I went off far here. That's fine. You don't mind doing that because I want to make sure I got a good cut corner. And I just wanted to make sure that everything was flush all the way along there. I'm going to go in ahead now, and I'm going to weld all this section up here first and grind it and dress it and have it all done. I'm not going to weld anything up yet over here, over here, and leave that alone. I want to get the flat panel all straightened away first. And have that done. I'll get down underneath it, and I'll dress it all up and grind it all up down underneath so it's all said and done. And then I'll come back and I'll weld all this section here and I'll plug weld the ends on over there. Now I've gone ahead and I got everything welded up all the way around. I've after cooled it off and blown it off as I was going, well one spot at a time. I got it all done. I'm not going to do nothing else here now. I still got to weld it here and all this still got to be well. I got this pride up here now so I can finish this off. I'm going to finish this off and grind this so it's done. Dress this edge here and dress this edge here so it looks so it flows nice there and flows right here nice there and then I'm going to work on welding it onto the car. Okay, uh, I've been asked it many times over and over again about the grinding process. Um, all I use is these flex cut wheels. Uh, there's the part number there, 15L506. That's what they looks like. That's the one there's worn a bit. I find they're a lot faster. They don't have a lot of heat involved in them. All I'll do is I'll just knock the head down on these here. I won't grind this and I won't grind that. I'll try not to anyway, but I'll just grind down the head this here so it gets down so far. When I'm happy with it's down so far, I'll step up and I'll use a 24 grit pad on it. You can use a, uh, a flapper wheel. Some people prefer them. Uh, I prefer these. Right. So that's all I'm going to do is grind this off of this. Into that there, and now I'll finish it off with that there. Right. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get all this grinded up. So there it is, all grinded up. I finished it off with a 24 and dressed it all up. And then I got up here in this corner here and I've rounded off this edge here so it was nice. And all I did with that is I just used that there down inside there and I just rounded off the edges of it so it was a nice edge down there. So this flowed into this here. Then I came over here and did the same thing here. So now this flowed down in here and rolled around the corner. I guess the original panel here. And I got it all dressed up. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hook these up here now and weld them on. As you can see, it looks uh, factory. You got the beads coming over, got the bump in the floor, the nice rolled edge off the top edge, steps off on this side here, and it's got the bead up here. So let's see what it looks like now when it gets it all welded up. So there it is, all finished up on the top side. All that's been plug welded up along there and welded and all tapped down, so it looks all original. And all this has been dressed up. And that corner up here has been done. Now all I got left to do now is weld this wheel top onto this. So let's go weld that up now. So here's all I got left to do. You can see them here now. Here's my spot welds along here. I'm going to actually just plug weld them. I got this all squat together here now. Tapped in place and it fits really well. So now all I'm going to do is just weld these on here. Onto the inner lip that I had on the, uh, the floor section. And then I'll just grind all them down. I'm going to use a pair of vice grips like this to help clamp it. You pick them up at uh, Harbor Freight or any of them places. It's a piece of brass on the back side and two little V's. They're great for uh, getting around the welds, like so, and holding everything together. And that way you can just weld right in the middle of it and all the strength is there. So I had and I welded all that up there and I grinded off all the spot welds and everything. And I went in here then and I grinded all that down, cleaned all that up. I'm not going to bother to weld the back side on this. I got good penetration and everything on it. And the mount is going to cover a lot of that down there anyway, when I get the mount made. So I got this done now and everything's done, so that floor pan is finished. So there it is now, all welded up along there, all everything's pulled in, fits right nice. It's got a nice seam down along there now, so when the seam seals that there and down here, it'll look original. And I got the little button in it, and everything is flowed in. All her original beads and everything are there, and so it's a nice job done on it. Uh, many times fellas will turn around and patch this up. And then do it and try to do it in one piece and weld up on the top of this and patch it down. I've seen everything uh, done to these corners. It's a repair that's been done numerous times over the years on these cars. I'm willing to say it's the first place that goes on these cars. And to take your time and to do it in sections and do the pieces as you're going and uh, do a nice tidy job on it. No one will ever know that the floor pan was repaired in this car. 
because every time I look at one of these cars, when someone asks me to go look at a car from the 60s, this is the first thing I look at. Up here and up and down here, this section here. And you almost 95% of the time you see repair work done here, and you could see it. But on this car now in particular, the way this is done here now, you can seam seal all this up and do it. If you want to, you can fill the pan here, a little small bit to any in waves or anything that's in it, and paint it, and you will never know that this trunk floor is repaired. Anyway, I'm going to end this one here, and I uh, hope it, it was helpful because this is a major repair area on these cars, and it takes a bit of thought process going into repairing this section. So, um, like, I, like I said many times before, do one section at a time, finish it, grind it, dress it, do everything you got to do with it, and then move on to the next piece. Don't try to weld everything up all at once. Uh, just take your time with it. This is not a race. Um, you're doing it out in your own garage, doing it at your own pace. It may take me two hours to do a job. It may take you 40 hours to do the same job. This is not nothing about time uh, when it comes to restoring an old car because we're all, most of you guys are just here uh, learning, wanting to play with your own cars. Uh, a number of people have asked me how long it took and what would they charge in the shop and whatnot. This is not the whole point of these. This channel is the whole point to show you how to do the repair and do a nice job on it yourself. Doesn't matter how long it takes you. If it took you 20 hours to do this same repair, um, the whole thing with it is, when it's all said and done, you're gonna be happy with it. Anyway, I hope the tips were good, and until next time.